I just take a moment to thank uh, Jim, who's been uh, the director and producer. He's been the guy that's been keeping me out of trouble and telling me what to say and what not to say. And Glenn, of course, our camera guy and editor, we've done a terrific job over all these last months and the number of videos, I don't know, we've done 60 some videos and we're gonna keep on rolling them out. Also wanna thank all you people out there for your wonderful comments. It's given me a lot of encouragement to uh, continue to make videos. So uh, that's really a big bonus for me. I had no idea that I would affect so many lives. And uh, so thank you for watching and thank you for all your, uh, your devotion to our videos. Uh, Bridgeport. The Bridgeport that we have here is a typical one with a uh, variable speed. And one of the things that we looked at was how do we know if this head is parallel to the surface? You got a shot of that, Glenn? Oh, yeah. So if this head is tipped, say the work area is, or the spindle is back, when you're drilling a hole, obviously you're gonna be drilling a hole in at an angle, the same thing with milling, and vice versa if it's out this way or if it's right to left. So there's a way to do that, and what we did was provide you a photo here where you can see this is our actual machine back there. And you can see that there's graduations right here. So this head actually rotates right to left, and it also rotates front to back. It's pretty tricky because it's heavy, and it moves when you don't want it to, and it doesn't move when you want it to, which is not a good thing. So there's three bolts here, and there's a worm screw right here to adjust the up and the down, or if you would, when you're facing the front of it, so it would tip forward and backward. And then this one is the exact opposite. It has a screw here, and it's got bolts on the other side, and it allows you to rotate it that way. So what we did was we came in here, uh, this, if this is the table, we came in here and we decided that we are going to come down here with our work head and our spindle and we put an indicator on here like so and we came in here and we swept it all the way around. So we came around this way, we indicated it to the right, to the left, front, and the back and then we made our adjustments. It's a little tricky to do as I mentioned to you because this puppy is really heavy and it just does not want to cooperate. One of the problems you need to think about is that when you're adjusting this right to left, that's not such a big deal. That's pretty easy because it's on its center, it's on the center line, so you're moving right to left. But when you're going front to back, that gets a little tricky. Why? Because the pivot point is here and the front of the table is closer or rather the back of the table is closer to the pivot point than the front of the table. So what happens is, say that you're off 20 thousandths and you're off uh, uh, high here and low here. You would think you could split the difference with 10. Uh-uh, doesn't work that way, folks. So it's really a little tricky to, to, to get it to zero in. One of the things you do not want to do, and I can't emphasize this enough, do not try to do both adjustments at the same time. By both, I mean front to back, right to left. Don't do that. You'll be chasing that baby forever and you'll never get it right without spending about two or three hours doing it. And this isn't something you should have to do on a regular basis. Once you do it, it's done. Is it gonna be perfect? Well, it depends on the wear of the machine. If the machine is worn, uh, you, you, you can get a false reading in the table because the table, the table could be worn somewhat, it could be tipped right to left a little bit. So we're making some assumptions that the table is okay, that the knee is okay, and the knee's not uh, worn severely in the up uh, area versus the lower area. So we're making a lot of assumptions. Is it gonna be perfect on an old machine? Probably not, but it'll be better than what you have. So it's a good idea to tram it in for close work. When you really are gonna notice whether it's trammed in or not, and whether it's right, is when you do put a fly cutter on there and you start making a cut and you see a cross pattern where it, the, the cutter itself goes over itself as you go by, uh, it, you'll, you'll end up making a cross pattern or a cross hatch as we call it. That's how you know that it's, that it's dead perfect. But you can also tell that with an indicator. So we'll be able to do that with an indicator. Uh, Let's go in the back and we'll show you how we're going to do it. And again, please, if you do this, do the right to the left first. Get that out of the way, lock it down. 
then do the front to back. Don't try to do both of them at the same time. You'll make yourself crazy because I've been there a lot of years ago. Uh, I haven't done this in a long time, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. So let's go on the back and take a look. How do we know if the spindle is, is perpendicular to the table? We don't really know that. One way to find out is to put an indicator on here and to sweep it and to check it and see if it is indeed square this way and square this way. And there is an adjustment on, on the bridge port on the right hand side of the machine which we'll show you in a bit as to how to make the adjustment. So the first thing we're going to do is work off the spindle. Why the spindle? Because that's exactly what we're going to be using to make it parallel, and or not parallel, but to make it square. This, in my view, is a terrific tool, and I think every Bridgeport owner should have one. So we're going to clamp it on like so. We'll come down here. And I like to keep the point of the indicator somewhere in that area. So we'll bring this spindle down, we'll touch it, and let's put our zero right here, let's say. And we'll start with our sweep. We're about two thousandths plus there. We're five there. We're about twelve thousandths plus there from front to back, and we're minus a couple there. So I would say, and we'll take a look right to left, but as you can see there, we're plus five, and we'll go here 180 degrees, and we're plus five here, we're plus six. That's pretty close this way. I've got a problem front to back. Front to back is zero here, and I'm already showing 10 thousandths here, so I'm going to move this so we can actually get the back and the front. Now keep in mind there are other factors as well that may not necessarily be, depending on where the machine you know, you could have different spots where it's parallel, uh, or square rather, it's square here and you drop the knee down, it may not be square there. So that's another factor. But we're going to assume for the purposes of this setup that we're okay. But that's something you need to keep in mind, that it could be an issue. So we'll come in here just a little bit more. About like so. All right, I know, Glenn, if, you can, if you'll be able to see this, but I guess I'll just have to tell you where it's at. Is that okay? Sure. All right, so we've got zero here. And we're 10 thousandths high on that side. You know, Ten thousandths is a lot, but in the case of a bridge port, is it serious? No. Actually, this is not that bad. If we call it zero going this way, we're zero this way, so I'm good like this. I'm not so good front to back. Front to back, we're a good 10,000, so how do we adjust that? There's three bolts on this side, which I think you already had a shot of that. Didn't you, Glenn? Did you already get a shot of that? Yep. We loosen these three bolts, and there's a worm back here that we can turn, and that'll raise it and lower it. Now, i got to tell you, what we, what we need to do is be very careful that when we loosen the bolts, this thing just doesn't decide to fall a little bit. And when I say a little bit, it could be, you know, an eighth of an inch. It's not 
because of the worm gear back there, it's going to prevent it from falling totally. But it could slip a little bit. So we're going to loosen this. And leave it just a bit snug. And then we'll take this guy. I don't want my indicator on it because I don't want to crash it. So I'm happy with side to side. That was within about a thousandths going this way. Not good front to back. So we're off about ten thousandths. We'll give it a little tweak. And we're still off about five thousand. We'll give it another tweak here. And I got to tell you, this is so sensitive. And remember, you think you could split the difference from front to back. That is, if it's off ten thousands, you move it five. Nuh uh. Because remember, this is the pivot point right here. So the distance from here to here is different than it is out here. So it's going to move farther out here than it will back there. All right, so we'll give it an hour within a couple of thousandths. And, and I advise you to keep the bolt snug on this side. There's three bolts over here, which I think we showed you earlier. That's within about a thousandths all the way around. I'm happy with that. Now we got a little hole right there, but there's not much you can do about it because that's within a, you know, if you can get it within four or five thousandths, that's pretty damn good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll snug this down and hope it doesn't move. And it could. So let me put the indicator on here and see what it does. Didn't move there. Didn't move there. Didn't move there. So one last check. Zero. Within a couple of thousands. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that when we're going to drill two things. If we're going to drill a hole, it's going to be straight. It's going to be square with the table. It's not going to be going in this way. That's it. Let's go home. Ready to go, Glenn? It's not going to drill this way, and it's not going to drill that way or this way. The true test will be when we put our fly cutter on there, and if we get a cross-hatch pattern on it, we know that it's really square. So that's going to be the true test. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm happy with this now. Anyway, that's the correct way to tram in, as we call it, tramming in the table. And I think that, again, this is a great tool to have. And every Bridgeport owner should have one of these guys. We don't sell them. We're just talking about it, that this is a great tool. And it's necessary in my view. So that's how we train the table in. One thing I want, to, I want to caution you about is that before you do it, make sure you stone the table off good, clean it good, make sure there's no burrs on it. And when you put the vise back on it, my recommendation is this. Stone the bottom of the vise, clean it up really good, and also put a little light grease on it or oil. That way you won't get cooling underneath here and it won't cause the two surfaces to rust, which is never a good situation. So that's my tip on how to tram in the head of a Bridgeport. And thanks for watching.